morning and welcome back to Joe's Allotment Channel. Um, so we're now in week four of June. Uh, if you've been following our weekly vlog, thank you very much and thank you to die behind the camera as always. Um, if you've been following our weekly vlog, you'll see the jobs we've been doing every week. So this is now week four of June. Um, if you haven't been following our vlog, what we're going to do is do a weekly vlog throughout the whole allotment year for kitchen gardeners and allotment holders of jobs to do for each week, what to plant out, what to sow, how to look after the crops, um, how to store the, the end products and some sort of uh, recipes as well. So um, hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please consider subscribing on the button below and uh, see what we do this week. I'll get on and do the first job in a moment, which is um, planting out some cow, which is our second or third lot of cow, I think. Um, so we plant it successionally and we like to sort of have a constant supply and we like to uh, dry and free some as well for the year. So we're um, selling out the cow in this row here. Um, these are all planted on the 22nd of April and there's three varieties here. There's Black Magic, Curly Cow and Red Russian. So what I'll do is I'll plant about a foot apart and then we'll cover it with netting just to keep the um, birds, um, mainly the pigeons really, we like to come along and uh, eat the uh, nice soft leaves. So I'll get on and do that now. So give them a nice firming down. Give them a good watering and they should get away quite well. So this one's curly cow. A good root system. So just a matter of breaking them up. That's it. I'm getting a good firming in. So that's the cow done and covered. Um, next job is I'm going to put some sweet corn in here. Um, this was planted, I don't know, three, four weeks ago. That's our second lot. We've got uh, one lot that's sort of that high down the other end already, on the other plot. So these will go about 18 inches apart. I'll put them in this section here, I think. Oh wow, look at the roots on those. This is our own uh, compost from home. As you can see, there's newspapers and all sorts in there. Uh, right, so I'll divide these up and I'll plant these in here. Try and break off as much root with each one. So I'll put these about 18 inches apart and I'll give them a nice thorough watering as well. It's about 18 inches, is it? Well, right there maybe. Alright, we've got some spinach here. Um, this is uh, summer spinach, sown on the 8th of May. So we've got two varieties here, we've got a winter giant and a matador, so I'll put them into this section here and they go sort of eight, eight to nine inches apart. Okay, so that's the summer spinach in. We'll give it some water and they should give us a nice few meals in um, six to eight weeks hopefully. I've left some of them in little clumps so They'll grow on. Hopefully we'll get some rain as well. Where we dry the soil again. Yep, the next job to do is we're going to plant out the leeks. These were sown in a cold greenhouse on the 12th of March. We've got two varieties there. Uh, elephant and mussel borough. So it's just a matter of taking them out. Um, take out a clump.
So they trim off the roots a bit. Trim off the roots and trim off the tops a bit, but I'll um, keep the tops because we can uh, put them in a meal tonight. And uh, dip a hole. Trim the roots off a little bit, not too much though. Just give a little trim. Dip the hole, the stick, and mostly drop them into the hole. And then it's just a matter of watering the hole. So you don't put the soil back over the top, you just water them. Yep, so that's uh, four rows of leeks we've put in there. So that's two rows of mussel bar and two rows of elephant. It's about 180 leeks there. So hopefully we'll get a nice crop of leeks this year. We'll keep us going all the way through the winter. Lots of leek and potato soup, which we love in the winter especially. So we've just finished harvesting the broad beans, uh, the second bed that was unharvested. Nice little um, lot there. And we've kept these ones for seeds for um, next autumn, or this autumn really. Um, so yeah, we'll take these home, wash them, dry them thoroughly, and we'll um, freeze them. We might keep some to eat tomorrow as well, so finish harvesting at last. Right, so we're going to harvest some of the um, first earlies today. Um, the rocket, which we planted about, we sowed about three months ago, planted in the ground. So we'll see what they're like. A nice little harvest so should be enough there for a couple of meals for us so that's the some of the first earlies dug up so this week's harvesting we've got some new potatoes still getting some uh, rhubarb getting a few cucumbers come through spring onions we've got got our first courgette brilliant uh, still getting a few strawberries um, parsley we've still got coriander um, what else beetroot we got radishes um, and some peas as well so I mean, they're the main things we're harvesting this week so we've got a little, little steady supply coming through now so I've just harvested the garlic which we planted on the shortest day of the year and pulled it up uh, near enough at the longest day of the year so good six months nice big bulbs we take those home and tidy them up and dry them a bit they should last us quite a while Another job for week four of June is to tidy up any um, plum or cherry trees, any damaged or decaying or um, wood that needs chopping out really. So it's a good time of year to do that. So I'll actually you know, I'll chop out some of this top growth here, which is starting to show some damage. Looks like it's dying off. So I might, and the bottom leaves look really, really healthy and, yep, they're looking good. Lots of plums on it. so might tidy up the top of the tree, it's a good time of the year to do it. Uh, another job I've got to do in the next couple of days is plant some more main crop carrots and we'll get that done, um, do that in the next day or so. I'm just chopping out some comfrey, because another job to do this week is to mulch the squashes. So I'll put these down around the squashes, so it will feed the squashes it will protect them from the water evaporating too quickly and it will keep the weeds away so it's sort of a uh, good 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 all round so just, just putting it around the plant basically it's got a few courgettes coming through as well pretty good So last few jobs for week four of June, we've got some more successional seed sowing to do, which is spring onions, beetroot, and more lettuce. And the final job, which I've got to do when I go back down the allotment um, tomorrow, will be to um, feed the fig tree with some liquid comfrey. Just to, uh, now the fruit's forming, just give it a bit of a feed, and that'll help the fruit form a bit better. Um, so that's the job for tomorrow. So sow the seeds now. So, these have all been pre-watered and labelled. We've got white Lisbon spring onion. 
but as always I'll, I'll just plant them very just a few seeds in each one and when they germinate I'll um, plant them straight for the modules in their clumps and they'll grow in their little clumps into a nice sort of bunch of spring onions hopefully so that's those done we've got the bolt hardy beetroot same with that just plant a few seeds in each module and uh, keep them in their clumps when they come through they'll grow sort of three or four in each one not too many and they'll stay in their little clumps that's it Just separate those out a bit so they're a bit better spaced out don't want them on top of each other, give them sort of room to grow side by side when they come from, when they grow. So they're pre labelled. So we've got some little gem lettuce. So these will have to be pricked out and transplanted on when they germinate. So just a nice little sprinkling there, that should be plenty. Last ones are some low low rossos. Same with them, these are nice um, curly leaves sort of um, red variety, which is nice nice lettuce. Whereas the little gems are compact sort of green variety. So that should keep us going. So this is a successional sowing. We've been doing this every sort of few weeks. That's it, so I'm just covering these over now, lightly. A little bit more with the beetroot, it's a larger seed. Just a light covering on the lettuce, not too deep. Same with the other lettuce, lettuce, and same with the onion, just a little light covering, really, a quarter of an inch. So all these lots should be coming up in the next sort of uh, seven to fourteen days, and they'll go out onto the plot when space arises, and when other successional stones have been sort of uh, harvested and eaten. Really, and that's that. So I'll give all those a nice firming down now. They should hopefully get away. Water's coming out the bottom where I bought them, so they're nice and wet to start with. But I'll make sure I keep them sort of moist for the next few sort of seven to ten days make sure they uh, don't dry out too much that's that done um, trimming <laughs> trimming uh, harvesting preparing and showing how we store grapevine leaves um, we've got two grapevines this one at home I think it's about 20 years old now um, and we've got another one down the allotment which we inherited from the previous occupant who was an old Italian chap and I think that one's probably about the same age it's about the same thickness um, so if you've got uh, friends, neighbours, family have got a vine it's well worth harvesting some of the uh, vine leaves because you can make stuffed vine leaves with them which is a delicious meal um, but the reason we also fit them is to allow the air to circulate better allow the light to get through to the green, to the leaves you see the sort of grapes are starting to form now so if you allow the light through it's uh, better for the vine and it also um, stops the vine sort of sending all its time producing leaves instead of focusing on uh, maturing the fruit so yeah I mean what we do is we, we trim off the ends and we'll we'll pick as many as we can the best time to do this is sort of probably mid-May to mid-August that's the best time to sort of um, pick them when they're nice and tender because what happens if you, the longer you leave them the, the sort of tougher they get and if you pick them from the ends of the uh, new growth you get nice sort of uh, tender leaves and the, and the veins are not too tough whereas if you leave them and they're closer to the actual inside them they get a bit greener and tougher and then they're not very edible because they get a bit too tough to eat um, 
The other thing is you want the sort of roundy ones really, the ones that are a nice shape, like this one to sort of roll. Three to four inches wide is probably best, because it allows you to roll them a lot easier. But I mean, if you've got an indented one, you can still use them, but it's harder because you've, because you've got the indents, it's harder to roll the, vi the vine leaf itself. Um, so yeah, we're looking for the tender ones, three to four inches wide and uh, you know, tender. So stuffed vine leaves are, are dolmars. They've been used in the Middle East, Balkans, and Mediterranean area for, for centuries. Um, yeah, I mean, what you need is nice fresh leaves to make them. And, and you prepare them by, once you've picked them, you give them a thorough wash and then blanch them for two to three minutes in boiling water and then plunge them straight into cold water and cool them down. Then they're ready for use. Um, if you want to sort of store them for later use, what, 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 we, what we do is we wouldn't wash them, we just dust them off, put them straight into the freezer and they can last up to sort of six to 12 months in the freezer, quite a long time. Um, and when you take them out of the freezer, sometimes you don't even have to blanch them because they've, they've already been tenderized by the freezing process. There are other ways of sort of preserving them. Um, we've tried putting them in brine before, but that wasn't very successful. We found freezing is the best method. Um, but if you go to the sort of uh, Mediterranean countries, you see them hanging up on strings. They sort of dry them. I'm not sure if we can do it in this country, but they dry them, then they rehydrate them when, they're, when they want to use them. Um, yeah, so what we, what we do as well, um, so not only does it give us the vine leaves, it gives us a nice shade to sit under. Um, and what we do at the end of the season as well, when we sort of uh, trim it all up, sort of January, December, January time, we trim off all the wood and we dry the wood in sections and we use that as kindling as well for fires, which is quite a good way of using the wood. So it's got a few uses really, a vine. It's not too bad. And the grapes as well. Um, this one doesn't produce very many edible grapes. Um, but we've tried making wine with them before, which was moderately successful, I'd say. Um, we've tried making vinegar with them, that wasn't very successful. Um, but we now sort of tend to make it into a juice, and uh, if it needs a little bit of added sugar to sweeten it up, we do that, and that's been quite good. Um, the one down the allotment, they're a lot larger, the grapes, than this one. They tend to sort of uh, probably double the size actually. And they're, they're more edible and they make a nicer juice because they're a bit sweeter variety as well. So yeah, I mean it's got it's got a few uses which is quite good. Um, so what we do now is we'll um, chop off some of the vines and we'll show you the ones we're sort of keeping and the ones we're not. And what we do is we chop them off. We harvest we try to get about 60 to 65 in a bundle which is um, enough to make a good uh, bunch of dolmars or stuffed vine leaves so we're looking for the tender ones which are about like four to six inches wide die out to correct me because I said three to four inches no she said that's too small we want four to six inches so these are the right size, sort of that size. Um, but yeah, you get a lot of compostable material as well, which is good. And that, it rots down very quickly in the compost. You can also use it for um, mulch. So these are no good, look, they've got holes in, they're damaged. They're no good and they're too tough. So we've got three out of that one. So if you look at the ones at the end, not too far at the end because they're, they're too soft. Actually, people use these in salads, the really soft ones, the young ones. Um, you can add them to a salad, it adds a lemony flavour to a salad. And I've also seen somewhere that um, people make tea with them, but I've never tried it myself. Um, but yeah, you can make tea with it as well. So it's now just collecting the, the ones that are right size, undamaged, unblemished, and still quite tender. So yeah, that's, that one's a bit tough now. They're going darker green, so if they get Start, start getting darker green, you know they're not uh, good enough anymore. So it's generally the ones at the end of the uh, new growth that are right size. No, that's too tough. That one's damaged, no good. We haven't got that many yet, but we'll keep going. 
as I say, we've got one down the allotment as well, which we harvest and leave from as well. They're, they're a good shape. Yeah, so we get about 60. We try and freeze them as well, so we, we get a few batches out of it. So that was a nice size one. And also, when, you, when you're preparing them to make the stuffed vine leaves, you chop off the stem completely, so you don't use it. You don't keep the stem on it. So we've thinned out the around the edges of it. We've got two batches of fifty there. Um, yeah, so that's enough to make a. We we'll freeze one and make one into a meal. Um, yeah, I mean, it depends on the amount the amount of people you're cooking for. Really, you can have a sort of going batches of forty, fifty, or sixty. And even 40 will give you two days worth of a meal. So that's like 10 per day. Um, we tend to have sort of new potatoes and salad or wedges and salad. So, you know, depending on how you'd like to enjoy your stuffed vine leaves. Um, they're very nutritious as well. They're low in calories and high in vitamins and nutrients. And I think, look at the supermarket prices, they, they tend to be about um, a pound for every 100 grams. So I think we've got about 350. 300 grams here, so so yeah, yeah for, for, for less than half an hour's work, we've got a decent couple of uh, meals there. Um, so what we do is we go down the allotment now and we'll harvest the ones down there as well, and that'll give us some to freeze. We've already frozen some batches already, so that'll keep us going for probably till next year when they're ready again. So yeah, so we'll, we'll um, see you down the allotment where we can harvest the next lot. So we've got a full bag of um, compost or mulch as well. And when you put it in the compost, it, it breaks down really, really quickly. So um, it's good stuff to put in compost. And it's good for mulching as well. Might use this to mulch some of the um, squashes. So this is the vine down the allotment now. Um, Look at it, I'd say it's probably about the same age as the one at home. Um, this one has much uh, more spread out and larger grapes when they do mature. And the leaves are slightly bigger as well. The fresh leaves are slightly bigger, so they're better for rolling because you don't need so many, basically. Um, it actually runs around the side of the fence as well. So it's um, quite a lot of uh, trimming to do. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll take some of these as well. So there's quite a few here to take as well. This will give, give us another few bunches. So hopefully you've enjoyed week four of June jobs. Um, yeah, if you have, give us a thumbs up, say you like the video. If you want to follow our journey, so there won't be a week five, it'll be the first week of July the next uh, vlog. So next vlog will be week five of July. Um, first week one of July, not week five of July. What I'm talking about. So week one of July will be the next vlog. So um, if you'd like to um, follow our journey, please subscribe below and uh, follow our journey through the allotment year. Thank you for watching. Happy gardening, everybody.